Hi guys, it's me Karen and I've come to do a picture in the ink house by Rory Dobner. And I'm going to do this little badger over here. And his name is Bill. Bill the Badger. He can't resist taking some mementos with him. A feather quill, two teapots, he wanted four but he resisted. And a very fetching t-shirt. <laughs> so we're going to do him. He's a nice kind of small pitcher, so I'm hoping I can get this done rather quickly. So I'm going to get the camera set up and hopefully I will get it set up correctly so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, we are going to be using um, ink temps, of course, in this picture. I have a selection of browns and um, blue because I want his little shirt to be blue. So the blue is navy blue, 830, and we're going to put that up here. And I am just scratching it down on the plastic sheet that I have that I got at the dollar store for cutting food on. And I just cut it down. This is actually a larger one because my other ones are drying in the bathroom. They're clean. Okay, we have 10, 17, 20. Put that one there. Saddle Brown, 17, 40. Bark which is 2,000. I'm going to set that over on this side. Willow, 1900. And the last one is going to be Oak, 1730. Set that one in the middle. Okay, we have our water brush. Ooh, kind of low on water, so we'll fill that up really quick. Take some water out of my spritzer bottle here. I don't want to get them walk all over the place, and hopefully I can do this without spilling all over me. There we go. Now, I've been getting a couple of uh, comments on my video that I I'm unable to uh, hear what I am saying and that I mumble a lot. So I'm sorry if that offends anybody, but I am a quiet spoken person. I do not um, yell a lot. And um, <laughs> I have tried everything I can to get a microphone that will work without having to have 5,000 things I have to do to the microphone to make it sound actually like a voice. So, um, because I got the new camera, which is my new phone, uh, it is actually quite large from the phone that I used to use. The camera is set up on this phone in a different location that I'm used to. So I am having a bit of a problem trying to uh, remember that portion of it. It is not in the center of the camera anymore. It's on the side. The equipment that I had was all set up for the other camera phone and I had to buy new things and I'm trying to get them to work. Uh, if you bear with me, I will get to that point <laughs> and I'm going to try to talk louder while I am coloring and try to enunciate my words better. Anyway, so we are going to color little Bill's shirt here, and we're going to take some of that navy blue, which is a nice dark, and I am just touching it on the plastic sheet with the water pen, and then I'm just going to take it where it would be the darkest, and then just drag it on in. It uh, thins itself out because you're using most of the ink on the corners over here. Also, because I'm using it on the uh, plastic pad, I have a little more time to color with it. Then just pick some more of it up if you want to make it darker. It just makes it easier for me to get the color where I want it. 
without having to color directly on the paper and try to manipulate the ink all over the place. Okay, so we have his shirt done. And I hope you could see that. <laughs> We're going to um, try some oak here on his bag and I'm trying to make it kind of a burlap colored bag. So we're just going to bring that down on the existing uh, hash lines that the artist has given us. So just taking it, putting it in the dark areas and then bringing the lightest part into the center of the bag. Try to keep the brush from scrubbing on the paper. Just lightly dabbing it with the tip. I'm gonna go into the bark that I put up here and I'm gonna add some of that in to make it darker. So I can add a shadow in here. So I'm just going in and adding a shadow where the shadows already are, but darkening it up. It's one of the things I just love about this book. Just putting a little bit of color down, it just changes the whole page. Okay. Needs a little more in the center here, so I'm just gonna bring it right up. Okay, so I forgot to get white out and I need that, so hold on a second. Okay, I forgot, um, I need to color in a little badger here. Bill needs some color in his face. So the colors I usually use for this are the antique white, which is 2300 and the Sicilian yellow, which is 220. And I mix those two together to make a beige. So we just take the white and add in some of that yellow and get it mixed in good enough. And like his face needs to have a little color in it. We do not want him looking like he's <laughs> A scared little badger. So we're going to put a little of that in his coloring here. It's a nice light color. I'm also going to put a little of the um, tan down in his fur here. I am not sure what color badgers are, but he's going to get a tiny bit of coloring there. A little tan up here just to give him some shadows. Poof, he's all done. Um, I have to let him all dry before I work on the ropes that come down. So we're gonna go up here onto the staircase area. Uh, I've got a tree up here, so we might as well do the tree. So we're gonna go in to all our browns. This is saddle brown. So I'm going to add um, about three different colors up here, at least three, because I have three out. <laughs> I'm going to tip into all of them. by mixing your browns you'll get a nice wood tone here and always remember that the ink tents will dry lighter than when you put it down okay so 
we have a few um, leaves coming in here like a rose bush and I will have to get other colors out for that. We're going to work on the staircase here. So I'm going to take some of the saddle brown and mix it with some of the white and it'll just lighten it up a bit. Trying to go for more of a light wood here. And I'm going to bring it down the wood paneling. So everywhere there's a wood paneling piece, that's where that'll go. And there's wood paneling in the ceiling. So add some there. And there is some over here on the um, wall. Just bring it right up and over. I'm not sure up here we're going to Add it in anyway up here. Running out of the white. Okay. Then on the stairs, we need to add a little darkness coming down. So we're gonna make that color that I used um, here just a tiny bit darker. by not adding so much white. And we're gonna put some of the shadows in here. And there we go. We do have a door frame over here that we should probably darken also. So I'll darken that up a bit. Okay. Then we have to do the inside panels, but I have to wait for it to dry. So I'm going to darken this up a little bit up here though. And in the corner, it should probably be darker still. So I'm just going to add a bit of darkness in there. There. Okay, let all that dry. I think he's dry enough here to work on his rope. So we're going to add a little willow into this. A little of the saddle brown. And a little of the bark in where the knots are. Okay. Need to get out um, some green. I don't think the other color is going to work, so hold on a minute. Okay, we have a little tiny bit of leaf green, which we're going to try to touch on these little itty bitty leaves here. Just to add some color, and we have a rose, so we have a little of the um, Shiraz, Shiraz, 
color. So we're gonna add that there. And we can add a little of that red color also into the rope. Just adds a nice little touch. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use some ink tents, or not ink tents, some distress ink into the um, walls. Why not? Let's see what color we have for that. Okay, we're going to use some scattered straw and some gathered twigs. Kind of the same way I did the last one. We're going to uh, take some sticky notes and I'm going to just lay them down. You can see all my <laughs> funny little sketchy pieces on these. Just lay it down. It just has to touch. It doesn't have to be perfect. It must be good enough to stick down now. Okay, then we're going to take the um, scattered straw here. Find a sponge to use on my tool. We're going to test it to make sure it's the right color I want. Now it's kind of a nice creamy color. Okay, and we're just going to start on the um, scratch paper here. And just ink it in. Okay. And then on top of that, we're going to add a little of the brown. So I'm going to get another tool, find another ink pad, <laughs> and then we're just going to do the brown in the corners, kind of bringing it in a little bit. It's okay if we get little crinkles. I'll show you what it looks like when we pull off the paper. And that's what I'm going for in each one of these little panels. So I'll just lay it down again. And since this is just a small one, I can avoid that. And there we go. So I'll just continue to do that down the whole page. And again with the um, I can avoid his nose. <laughs> Just do it like that. Okay. So I'll finish the little panels here and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I thought I'd show you this corner up here because it has a um, different look than the rest of it. So we're going to put that down and we're going to add in the brown, but we're going to do it really dark at the top. To blend it down a little bit. I'm going to keep most of that up here. I will add a little bit down in the rest, but it's dark up here. And we'll take that off. 
and it gives us a shadow line going upward. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to darken the um, woodwork that I put on here because it is not as dark as I'd like it. And right now, it does not look like wood. So, to make sure I'm in frame again. I'm going to go ahead and go in with the same colors. And I need more of the saddle brown. And I'm just going to take some of that and put it in here a little bit. And then we will see what we get with that. Just gonna darken it up. Bring it down. Smear that down, a little more water on it. Not too much in his fur here. Then we're going to get out some pencils and darken this up a bit too. Okay, so I will get out the pestles. Okay, so I got some um, polychromos out and Van Dyke brown, walnut brown. I have Caput Mortem violet. I'm not sure if I'll use that. I was just trying to get the colors that I had out already. I do want a yellowy tone, but we'll see what we got when we do this. Okay, I'm going to start with the uh, Van Dyke brown. I've moved the camera down a little bit more. And I'm just going to go around in the shadowed areas here. And kind of bring it out a little bit.
So obviously I'm not talking, so don't think I'm being too quiet. I'm just trying to concentrate on the color that I'm laying down. Okay. And if I want to add some of this into the browns, into the um, kind of yellowish colors I've got going on there, I will do that. I am going to try to get a different colored pencil here. Hopefully you don't hear a crash. All those falling down. <laughs> Okay, what do we have here? A green gold? I don't want the guy green gold. Here, what are you? A light yellow ochre. That'll look nice in here. I also look nice in the uh, other color I put down. Just doing a coat over the existing color I have down already. And it will help me when I'm putting down another layer of the brown. Hope you're all having a good day. It's finally decided to give us a little rain. We were having just the warmest weather. It's nice to Mother Nature water my garden for a couple days. Okay, then we'll go back in with some browner tones and darken this up. This is, um, boy, the green gold. I thought I'd bring that in. Can add a little of that in the panels here too. A little bit of the could put more down in here.
probably put the music over this so you don't have to listen to just the pencil. I'm sorry. some browns in this too. Hold on. Alright, I brought in brown ochre and burnt umber and raw umber and I will be leaving all these pencils down in the description box so you can find them down there if I don't give you the numbers. This is the mm -hmm, raw umber that I'm using right now. Kind of lightly using it to cover that little panel there. this piece of wood. Badgering his badgered ear. <laughs> Sorry about that, dude. I'm trying to change your color on you, aren't I? Okay, and we're going to go in with the burnt umber. Not the color I want it to be yet. Okay, um, I'm thinking I might want to lighten up the um, walls a little bit so, and they are distress ink and they are water based and they did dry a little darker than I thought so I'm just taking a water brush with water on it and I'm just going to put it down and then wipe some of that up in certain areas. You have to make sure your water brush is wet. I'm going to take up some of that uh, ink that I put down. So you get it wet and then you pull some of it up. 
It is not going to remove all of it, but it will lighten it up if you got it a little too dark in some spots. You can also use this technique if you um, didn't blend it quite right and soften it up a little bit around the edges. You can see it pulls up quite a bit. Let's get enough water on there. Okay. So we're just lightening them up. And then you have to let it dry again. See how light we can get those. There. And that kind of looks like an older wall anyway. <laughs> kind of what I'm going for. Old plastered walls. There. Okay. Now I definitely have to let that dry because it is quite wet. And I'm pretty sure it didn't bleed through. But you'll notice I got a whole bunch of ink down here that I wasn't paying attention to. And I'm really not going to worry about it. One said you can get some of that lifted with water. Two Just blurring it in here is fine. Also, um, <laughs> these two pages, pages have to be cohesive, so at least I got it on both pages, right? I will be inking around the edges here down into the words, and I will make sure that that color bleeds into the other side of the page. I'm not going to fret over that. Okay. So I'll be back in a few minutes when this is totally dry. Okay, on the wall here, I want it to look a little older, so I went ahead and um, tried this stamping technique I like. So it's just laying the same uh, sticky notes down. This is my itty bitty background stamp. I put in the ink, stamp it off once, and then just stamp in that area. And I'm going to get this kind of old look in there. So when I do the woodwork, it doesn't look so... Oh, I just stamped my finger. <laughs> it just kind of gives it a, a cool look. I'm going to do it on the walls back here and in the ceiling. Just a, putting the sticky notes down so it doesn't... Get on the side of the paper. Okay. I'm just going to do it on all the wall surfaces. Some will show up more than others. ceiling too. Might add a few more darker ones up here. And then a couple up on this wood. Boom, there we go. And then I'll just keep working on the um, banisters here, just adding different colors of brown and shading under the stairs and such. Using all the different colors of browns I have 
to make it look more like um, wood paneling in an older house. And as far as I know, they had dark wood. And only in modern houses do they paint the dark wood white. So I am going after the uh, dark wood color, obviously. <laughs> so I can just keep going over and over and over it with different colors of brown. So at the end of the video, I will show you the finished picture. And like I said, there is no rhyme or reason. I'm just darkening it until I like the color. I will be adding some yellow tones into it, brown tones into it, red tones into it, and just coloring until it ends up being as dark and as woody looking as I like. Um, the reddish tone is going to be the uh, Caput Mortem Violet color. Kind of adds a kind of a mahogany color to the wood, so it doesn't look so piney. I'll probably add a little black in here also. And I can add a little of that to our rope. So, at the end of the video, I will show you what the finished product looks like. It's going to be close to this. There's going to be a little inking and, um, well, because I have a boo-boo here, we'll just bring in some of that uh, what is it? Straw? Scattered straw? Let's bring it down into um, Bill the Badger's story here. So bring it down on this side and we'll put some up here on this side. We'll also add in some of that brown. Especially because I goofed down here, and we need a little bit of that color. And we'll also, for that boo-boo, just add in some of the little dots that the, um, Itty bitty stamp does. It also match the inside. And we'll put some of the dots in the scattered straw also. We will put in some water and we're going to pull up some of that with the. Um, See if you can so we splatter it with water and you see it there and then we lift it just like that and you get a cool splattered effect anywhere the water goes down. Boom. We'll do that up towards the top up here. Got some in on the ceiling. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Didn't want to do that. But... Well, it's there, so. <laughs> so we get that nice little uh, softening here that I like so much. Okay, there we go. I will continue to work on the woodwork until it's darker. 
So other than that, we are finished. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you have a great day. And uh, I'll see you in another video. Take care now, everyone.